Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise your name, Lord God. Shout this. Go ahead and shout this. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Yes, sir. When we think about all that you've done for us, all that you're doing in our lives at this time, oh, Lord, we owe you a shout. Oh, Lord, we love you. There is none like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your Lord. Bless your Lord. Bless your Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless the Lord God on my... Hey, Mark. How you doing? Good to see you. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, bless the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. Glory to God. Bless the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. My, my, my. You know, God does nothing without saying it first. He does nothing without saying it first. Uh, I want you to take a look at something. I want to, we're going to examine God's creative power. Uh, to, to set the day, today's message up, I want you to see something. Go to Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. God does nothing without saying it first. I am made in the image of God and in his likeness. I identify with him. Uh, I identify with my image. I don't identify with the world system or anything of that nature. My identity comes from him. It comes from my image because I, my image is I'm made in the image of God. I identify my identity as attached to my image. So often we, we, we identify with things on the outside and we don't go to our image. Uh, if you're a, a football fan or, or, or a sports person, whenever your team does not win, your identity is attached to that and you don't feel very good. Uh, like I said, it's football season, so the Saints better win or unless a lot of people are going to be affected. Uh, so I identify with my image. Now, in Romans chapter 4, verse 17, it tells us that as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Of course, you know he's talking about Abraham. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called it those things would be not as though they were. Two things. He gives life to the dead. And also, he calls those things which be not as though they were. What does he do? Call those things which be not as though they were. Now, go to uh, Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read 1 to 4. Genesis chapter 1, we're going to read uh, 1 to 4. Call it those things which be not as though they were. One says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God <clears throat> moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be what? Light. Let there be what? Light. Let there be light. And what happened? There was light. In verse 4, verse 4 says, and God saw the light that it was what? Good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So go back to verse 3. Notice how God operates. He does nothing without saying it first. He's going to tell you first, then after that, he's going to do it. Verse 3 says, and God said, remember the condition of the earth. It was dark, void, and he did something that you got to learn. Remember, God's word has created power. Your word has created power. And God said, let there be what? And what happened? There was light. So who was with him at that time? We had the Godheads, of course, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but they are one. They, they, they all connected. So 
It would be like you. Uh, go to Joel. Let me show you something. He also did. Joel chapter 3, verse 10. Joel, Joel, not Job, but Joel or Joel, chapter 3, verse 10. Look what it says. Chapter Joel, J O E L. I want you to read it for yourself. God does nothing without saying it first. A lot of times, kingdom citizens who operate in the kingdom, uh, we don't make sense to the world. Uh, it, it's like, it, you lying. How did you, you be saying that you well when you sneezing all over the place, you got a temperature, you can, but you keep saying you well. You're not telling the truth. I'm operating in a principle that God has taught me. It says this. Now, he's talking to, uh, he's talking to farmers. He's letting them know, get ready, y'all going to have to throw down. You get ready, y'all going to have to throw down. Now, there wasn't, they, they're not soldiers. They're farmers. So he's letting them know, <clears throat> get ready, <clears throat> you're going to have to throw down. I got to get a couple of water before I read this one. <laughs> Beat your plowshares into what? Swords. Swords. And your pruning hoots into what? Tears. Oh, my God. I'm a farmer. Now, I'm about to take my farmer's tools and turn them into weapons? And then he says something. What he said? He said, let the what? The weak say, I am strong. Whoa, Lord. So he's letting them know. Look, you're going to have to throw down. I need you to turn yourself. Your mentality is going to go from farming. To whip him backside. Yes, yes. And so he's letting him know, look, I'm aware that you think you're weak. So I'm going to give you an antidote. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you instructions. Yes. And he's saying to the weak folk, what is he saying? I'm strong. He's telling the weak folk to say something different. Yes, Lord. Stop saying what you have. Yes. Unless what you have is what you want. If you don't want what you have, you better say something different. He's telling weak folk, he's telling farmers, y'all about to throw down. I need you to do something. These are your instructions. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. You have to go. He's telling you. But what happens is you've been trained by this society in this world, and you always believe, I say what I am. What I have is what I say. What I say is what I have. But he said he operates on a different level, the level that you're supposed to be operating on because you were created in his image and in his likeness. Now, having said that, let's get to where we need to go. Let's get to where we need to go. Now, God said, God said what he saw. He said it first and then he saw it. Go with me to uh, Romans chapter 10. 9 and 10. Of course, you're going to hear this verse at the end. It's important for you to, to get a different mentality. Your words have power. Your words have power. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and verse 10, it says this. That if thou shalt confess with thy, if thou shalt confess with thy, that means I'm saying something. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe where? Believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead. What's going to happen? You mean to tell me I am talking, I am saying myself to salvation. I'm talking, I'm saying myself into salvation. I believe with my heart, I say with my mouth. Your words are important. Tell me what I said. Words are and then he gives you uh, verse 10. He said, look, for with the heart man will do what? Believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth, what happened? Confession. Confession is made unto salvation. So it's highly important for you to understand, my words carry power. Tell me what I said. My words carry power. Now, I don't know how. There are things and people that, that are on the inside of you that you really didn't know was on the inside of you, and you, you wind up operating in principles that you didn't even know was a principle. You just would operate. And so, I mean, there was a young girl. She was like 14, and she told me she was going to marry me. 
I don't know how she knew that. Because I sure didn't. But they were principled. You, you, you've been saying things, but it's been working on the other side. I, I don't feel good today. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been waiting for an opportunity to kick your backside. Uh, things never go right for me. Okay. Remember, your words carry weight. The world is against me. Well, according to the Bible that I read, if God be for you, who can be against you? So it's important for you to understand. Now, having set up, here we go. This is where we need to be. Psalm 66, verse 12. Psalm 66, verse 12. Hallelujah. While you're getting there, you have to understand that God always has a plan. Tell me what I said. Now, remember the children of Israel. He brings them out of something into something. It's always just, it's just not out. You know, I've seen, you know, uh, uh, in our system, uh, there are children that grow up in our system. And then once they reach a certain age, they are just turned loose. Here, take these few dollars, and then you're on your own. You know, they grow up in a group home, or they grow up in a society, or, or once they reach a certain age, they're just kicked out, and they're left. They're, you left here, but this is where you go. People go, you know, they get incarcerated, they get out, you paid your debt to society. Now, get out. And go where? Do what? But you see, God always has a plan. When he takes you from something, he brings you to something. It's just not out, it's into. It's just not out, it's into. It's just not what? It's what? Into. Psalm 66, verse 12. Thou has caused men to ride over my head. We went, what? Through the fire, through fire. And what? Water. Through water. Stop right there. Let's talk a minute. Now, there is a difference between through and breaking down. When you're going through something, it is necessary. I am going through it. But so often, instead of going through something, you with your big mouth decide that I'm going to live here instead of going through it. You run into situations and circumstances, life situations and circumstances, that you're supposed to go through it, but what happens is you and your big mouth decide that, you know what? I am going to throw a pity party right here. Oh, times are so hard. Oh, it's so bad. And then you want, instead of God intending you to go through it, you just sit down there and you built up a camp. This is my campsite. Let's build a house right here in this hard time. But that's not what he said. In Psalm 23, you know it by heart. He said, yea, though I walk, walk through. He didn't say camp out. He didn't say to throw a pit. He said walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Again, he's telling you what to say. He's telling you what to say. I never wanted to be an actor, but uh, I, I, there was a time that was doing an interview, and he was talking about how I don't know why they give actors such credit. They tell us what to say. They tell us what to st where to stand and where to go. They tell us everything. Well, God is trying to get you to do the same thing. All right, all right. Come on. I'm trying to tell you what to say. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you what to believe. I'm trying to tell you, don't be scared. I'm trying to tell you. But what happens is you get there and you do the opposite. Because you've been trained by this. I'm sorry, not you, but other people you know. They've been trained by this society and the world in which they live. I mean, let's face it. Uh, laziness is a commodity. It's a commodity. They're selling it all the time. You may not realize it, but at some point, sometime this week, you're going to take advantage of their laziness opportunity. It's called fast food. <laughs> it's called microwave. <laughs> It's called anything that's going to make your life supposedly easy for you. I don't know if they still use the word, but, but I'm going to say it. Work. Did they still use that? Work? They still use that? 
when people get jobs, they're always looking for the easiest job that's going to pay the most. When you find it, there's a whole lot of people want to talk to you. I don't, because if it's like that, it ain't going to do me no good. I don't care what it is. Work is going to be involved if it's important. Now, you know, uh, some people have spent a long time looking for somebody to take care of them. A long time. They are looking for Mr. Rich. They're looking for, uh, let me see, how many other names they got? Sugar Daddy, Mr. Rich, take care of me. Oh, they even got Sugar Mama too now. Uh, they're looking for somebody that's going to take care of them where they have to do nothing and they're being taken care of. If you find that person, you better run. You better run. Now, back to here again. He said, look, we're going through it. We're not camping out. Uh, we went through the fire, through fire, through water, come on, come on. and then the second part. But thou has brought us out into where? He had brought us out, of, out into a wealthy place. He's letting you look, look, we ran into, now the things that we, that we encountered in Psalm 66, it's because of us. We decided to do something God told us not to do. And so as a result, the things that he said would happen, did happen. But it's really not God. I mean, the children of Israel, they decided that, you know what, God? You cool and all, but these idols in Egypt are so much cooler. They shine, they glitter. And so they decided that they were going to worship those things. And they turned away from the God of heaven. And so here he said, look, though you go through it, I'm going to bring you. I'm going to bring you where? It's right there at the bottom, those last words. Title of today's message, My Wealthy Place. What's the title? My Wealthy Place. My wealthy place. Uh, make these confessions with me. Out of discouragement, Out of discouragement. Into, encouragement. into encouragement. Out of distractions, Out of distractions. Into, focus. into focus. Out of debt, into wealth. into wealth, out of defeat, out of defeat. Into, winning. into winning. Let me read them again for all of you note takers. And for all of you with that photographic memory, I guess you're going to have to listen again so you can remember it. Out of discouragement, out of discouragement. Into, encouragement. into encouragement, out of distractions, out of distractions. Into, focus. into focus, out of debt, out of debt. I got to say that one again, out of what? Out of debt. Into Thank you very much. Out of defeat into winning. winning. Thank you. All right. Now, let me read this. It says, God has a plan for me to be wealthy. Go ahead. Say that. God has a purpose for me to be wealthy. God has a design for me to be wealthy. God has an objective for me to be wealthy. Let me get it again. God has a plan for me to be wealthy. God has a purpose for me to be wealthy. God has a design for me to be wealthy. God has an objective for me to be wealthy. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Deuteronomy 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 18. Kingdom business will take care of kingdom people. The kingdom takes care of the people who takes care of the kingdom. Kingdom business will take care of kingdom people. Kingdom people will take care of kingdom business. The kingdom takes care of the people that takes care of the kingdom. Deuteronomy 8, 18. It said, but thou shalt, what's that word? Remember. But thou shalt, remember. that thou shalt, remember. if he's telling you, but thou shalt remember, what? There is a chance that you might what? Forget. forget. There's a chance that you might forget. Now, like I said before, it's important for you to watch your words. 
and I'm always talking to myself. Whenever things is not working right, I am telling my, I'm calling what I want it to be. So I'm always talking to myself. But no, you have a good memory, son. You remember a lot of things. You're not a forgetful person. You're a good, you've got a good memory, glory to God. Whew, I got to say that often. <laughs> because my wife sent me to the store. And uh, it, when, in my younger days, I, say, I used to say, look, if it's three things, if it's more than three things, you got to write down. You got to write down. Now she sent me to the store. You need to text me. <laughs> Everything that you want. Because I am calling this good memory, man. I'm calling it back, glory to God. It said, but thou shalt remember. And then he tells you, this is, the, this is the heartbreaking thing. Because if he's telling you to remember, there's a chance that you might forget. Look at what the chance that you might forget is. But thou shalt remember what? You might forget the Lord thy God. How do you forget the Lord thy God? Circumstance, situations, things that go on in your life. You get there and you react just like normal people would. Instead of somebody that's connected to God. I know God. I don't have to be like this. Let me calm myself down. Remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee what? Power. He give you power to do what? Get oh, my goodness. He giving you power to get wealth. He's giving you power to get what? Wealth. You better get your power back. You better get your power because he's already given you power to get wealth. So you need to start saying something. Your checkbook may be lying to you. Your pocketbooks may be lying to you. It might, not, it might not support what they're saying, but you know what? You need to start calling something different. Lord, the Bible says in Romans 8, 18, you give me the power to get wealth. So, Lord, despite what I see in my checkbook, in my checkbook I thank you, Lord, that I got the power to get wealth. Wealth coming to me now. In the words of my apostle, money coming. So you have to say something different. Instead of saying all the time what you have, because you're simply repeating a process. You're simply repeating a process. I look, I am amazed about the, the human body. Uh, in Psalms 139, he tells us that I am fearful and wonderfully made. Now, that is, it's amazing to me. Because I had a relative, uh, let me see. When she died, I was like 50, I think. Something like that, 50. And so... As long as 50 years, she was sick every day. And she lived to like 80-something. She was calling death for a long time before death finally said, okay, time to go. I'm sick of you. <laughs> Come on, let's go. If <laughs> You've been calling me all this time. My goodness. You, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. On the pack of cigarettes that you pay like $5 a pack for, not you, but somebody you know, that you pay like $5 a pack for, it tells you, this, do they still have may cause cancer on it? They can just get rid of me. They can just get rid of me. And I know people that smoke 75 years. And then finally. So you are fearfully and wonderfully made. But if you give your fearfully and wonderfully made some help with saying what God says about you, you're going to hit all of those marks that the Bible says you're supposed to hit. Your lifespan is supposed to be at least 70. And then it goes up to 120. I got plans for 120. What about you? Yes. Glory to God. Now, let me, let me get, uh, I got to get here. You get power to get wealth. So let me read it again. I, I know I talked a little bit. I don't want you to lose focus. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish Whose covenant? covenant? Whose covenant? Which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. Let me give it again. Go ahead back to the beginning. Watch the number of his and his. It said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his. covenant which he swore again. The number of his is not you. The wealth is not for you. It's for you to establish his covenant. It is. Now, you can enjoy the benefits of him giving it to you. Yes, he's going to bless you immensely. But when you go at it, you're not going at it just for you. You've been trained by a pastoral model. And in the pastoral model, it teaches you it's about you. It's about you. It's not about God. But under the apostolic model, it's about God. And if you don't like it, you just better shut up and get in line. 
It's about God. It's not about you. It's about who? It's about God. It's not about you. It's not, about, oh, God, bless me this. Bless me that. Bless me that. Won't you shut up and just say, what, what can I do, Lord? What you want me to do? John 2, 5. Mary told the guy, look, whatsoever he say do, do it. But, man, we are so self-centric. You even decide that you're going to give yourself a holiday. I mean, you got several. You got cheat day. You got me day. You got, hey, keep all those days and give it all to him. Tell me what I say. Title of today's message is My Wealthy Place. My what? My Wealthy Place. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. You have a homework assignment. The book of Ruth is four chapters. You can listen to it and you can hear uh, in like under 15 minutes. Listen to it, read it, the book of Ruth. That's what you want to do. Now, when you read that and you meditate that and you think about that, God is going to show you some areas in which you need to bring it up. You need to, you, God's going to show, he's going to speak to you. He's going to let you know, hey, look, you got to do better here. He's going to communicate to you. The Bible is a book written about you. You just have to find yourself in it. And Ruth is going to give it to you. Ruth is going to give it to you. Four chapters. Now, my wealthy place is my assignment. My wealthy place is my assignment. That's the reason why church is so important. When you come to church, God speaks to you concerning your assignment. What it is that you're supposed to do? How, it, how are you going to bring the kingdom assignment, this kingdom assignment to pass? Now, in the book of Ruth, uh, her assignment was her mother-in-law by marriage but her mom by choice. Naomi was Ruth's mother-in-law by marriage, but became mother by choice. Everybody has an, uh, an Abraham. Everybody has an Abraham. Let me show you what I mean. Go to Genesis chapter 1, chapter 12, I think it's 3, 12 and 3. When you get there, I'll let you know if you hit it on the spot. Genesis. Let me show you what I mean. Everybody has an, everybody has an Abraham in their life. And I will bless them that what? Bless you. I will bless them that what? Bless you. See, God is going to have you connected to somebody that knows what their assignment is and they're carrying out their assignment. Now, here it says Abraham, but Abraham is not just Abraham. Abraham is Naomi. Abraham is Apostle Thompson. Abraham is whoever God connects you to. They have an assignment, and your job is to help bring that assignment to pass. And so God is saying, whoever that person is, he said, I will bless, I will bless them that bless thee. Abraham, whoever blesses you, whoever takes care of you, I got them. Amen. See, when, I, when we sow to Apostle Thompson, it is not. Apostle, to, look, we, we, uh, apostle, yes, he's, he's a blessed man. It's not us, all right, it, it's not an exchange. It, when we sow there, then God obligates himself to, okay, I got you. Amen. I got you. But so often we look to the man of God and say, look, I got this need. Okay. A great teacher, our apostle, he tells you where to look, but he don't tell you what to see. A great teacher tells you where to look, but he don't tell you what to see. The purpose of the statement is you have to establish your relationship so that he can tell you what to see. See, the, aposto the, the pastoral model is about the fivefold or the pastor doing all the work for you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lay hands on you. You have a need. I'm going to go in my pocket. I'm going to give it to you. That, that's the posterior. I mean, we get upset. A guy even stopped by my house and he said, look, you know what? The church is supposed to take care of all of its people. Well, that's not what Ephesians say. Ephesians said, look, I'm supposed to train you and then you're supposed to take care of those things. That's what Ephesians said. And under the pastoral model, that's what they, I mean, my goodness. Uh... There are some pastors that you talk about a jack of all trades. I mean, they cut the grass 
If there's a leak in the church, they're fixing the leak. If somebody needs a ride, they're giving them a ride. If they need somebody to visit in the hospital, they're in the hospital. And the people say, I got a good little pastor. <laughs> He's going to stay little. Because that's not what God intended. I, I, I know it's hard for you to believe, but let me show you what the... Uh, what, I'm supposed to read this, huh? I'm going to come back and get it. Go, go to uh, Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. My wealthy place, I have to understand, my wealthy place is an assignment. Now, Abraham, yeah, that's where I am. Make sure I go back there, Bruce. Don't let me forget. Uh, right now, I'm going to Acts. I think I want chapter... Not chapter 5, it's got to be chapter 4, Acts 4. Uh, Ananias and Sapphira died in after Acts chapter 6. Uh, give me a chapter, uh, let me see, what is that? Uh, continually prayer, Acts chapter 6. Uh, Acts. This is when... It's Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 6. That is it. Acts chapter 6, verse 1. Let me show you something. Under, let me show you how the apostolic model looks. The pastoral model, the people would have had a fit. I'm leaving. Can't talk to me like who you think he is. Six and one. And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring, a what? Murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Look, we need more food. You're giving, your, you're giving all the food to the Hebrews, and we ain't got nothing. And so it's a murmur. It was a problem. You got to understand the women's job was to take care of the household and the family. So they weren't talking about them that we don't have enough food. My children don't have enough food. It's not just about me. It's my family. I got it. You got it. What, what you doing? A little bit of. People throw out the word racism too often when really it's not racism. It's actually favoritism. See, we throw out racism too easy. It's about favoritism. Let's face it. If you're in a situation and you know this person and you don't know this person and you have something and you have enough to give one, who's going to get it? The person that you know. That's not racism. That's favoritism. You understand? And so here the, the Jews was passing it out. And of course, the Jews would give it more to the Jews. It was favoritism. Stop thinking everybody's a racist. They just know. They, they know, Jimmy. They don't know you. <laughs> My goodness. Everything. I mean, what do you call when, it's, when, it, when both of them are the same race? Then you call it favoritism, don't you? All right, come on. Let me get it. Where am I? Verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them. And they said, look at what they said. Look at what they said. It is not what? This is not a cause for us. This ain't our job. This is, it is not reason. That we should what? Leave the word of God and do what? That's just not our job. But if the pastor told you that, if you're under the pastoral model, because, you know, and under the pastoral model, if they vote you in, they can vote you out. Under the pastoral model, he ain't going to say that. Because those deacons that sit on that front row, they're looking at him, mean mugging him every time. <laughs> Then all, next thing you know, you come there and there's a meeting. And you're walking up on the meeting. And he said, what's the meeting is about? Oh, we're just looking for our next pastor. <laughs> Under the apostolic, it's all about God's business. Look at what he said. Go back to the verse. He said, look, we, this, we not, what? The priority in this verse is the word of God. We're not leaving the word of God to take care of this. No, no. We are committed to what God calls us to do. All right, all right. And what God calls us to do is not wait on no, no tables. Come on. Somebody else got to do this. And that's what they do. They set it up. Say, look, I need you to call seven people and you're going to delegate that to them. 
but we. Oh, yeah, I need to go over this, too. I need to go, go to three. Let me tell you what kind of people that he asked for. Because we don't want no deacons that's trying to sleep with the, with the deaconess and they ain't married to them. We don't want the choir members doing, you know, everybody grown, doing a wild thing. We don't want none of that. None of that. Yeah, that's way back in the day. <laughs> Verse three. Wherefore, brethren, look where? Look he, among you. Find out. Look among you. And how many? Seven men. These are the qualifications of these men of God under these, under these people that's being delegated with this responsibility. The first one is what? Honest, Honest. Honest report. They got a good reputation. The first thing, everybody knows that it, this guy here does what he say, say what he does. Honest report. First thing, he's got a high level of credit, uh, integrity. What's the next thing? Full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. He's got to be a tongue talk. He's got to be full of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is going to be able to communicate with him to let him know that, hey, look, something ain't right about this situation. And then after that, what's next? Wisdom. Wisdom. Whom, who? We. Who you bring him to us, we going to lay hands on him because we going to know because the Holy Ghost is going to rat on him if they're not in right, if they're not in line. So under the pastoral, the pastor and the lead, and you don't take no responsibility. Not here. <laughs> Not here. The buck stop with you. Come on now. I'm going to teach you the word. I'm going to give you the word. At the end of the day, it's your church whether you do it or not. That's the way God does things. Come on. He tells you, all right, if you do this, this is going to happen. And then after that, he leaves it on you. That's Adam and Eve. They'll tell you. Oh. I need, uh, I, need, uh, I need to get Adam and Eve off the hook. I need to get them off the hook. Yes, I talk about them a lot. And, and, you know, God did tell them, look, you know, the day that you mess with this tree, that's the day that you're going to die. And they did mess with that tree. But look at your own life. How many times you done mess with the tree? All right, all right. How many times you put your hands on it? How many times you did what he told you not to do? So every time you point one finger at Adam and Eve, you better take all, all the rest of the other nine and point at you. So now, I bet you have a little, uh, little empathy for Adam and Eve now, huh? <laughs> Come on, let's keep going. I got to go back to uh, uh, Genesis 12 and 3. 12 and 3. 12 and 3. So under the, under the apostolic, the responsibility is on you. I'm going to tell you what to I am going to show you where to look. It's up to you what you see. If you properly connect it, you're going to see what I see. Yeah, right, right. You can wait for me there. But when, when, when God created Adam and Eve, he ate, created Adam first. Adam was created in his image and his likeness. And so God did a test run with Adam. Say test run. Test run. So God had created all the animals. When Adam got here, everything was done. It was all, it was all, I mean, everything was created. Adam was the last person to come on. And the last person became, you know, the Bible say, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And so Adam, everything that was already created, Adam ran the whole show. And so God is going to give a test run. He goes to Adam. He said, Adam, uh, I need you to name all these animals for me. And so Adam named all the animals. And whatever Adam named them, that was the name that was given. And so God, after he named them, God is saying, it's working, guys. It's working. He's, we on the same. We think just alike. Because everything that I was going to name them, he named them. We on the same page. That's the reason why he's giving you the Holy Ghost. He give you the Holy Ghost so you can stay on the same page with God. But what happens is you decide that you're going to leave the Holy Ghost and do it your own way. You decide that life is going to be gumbo. You take everything and you mix it together and make it taste good. And it ain't good for you. I know I heard a lot of gumbo eaters. <laughs> and it ain't good for you. So it's important for you to understand that, yes, he's got this thing together. The Holy Ghost is, it, he made you so you can line up. He did everything that he did. He's giving you the word. He's giving you the Holy Ghost. But what happens is, you are missing the most important ingredient. And that ingredient is you. And you are the time 
Now, we often say it, but now I want, I want to train you. I want, I, want, I want to say it different. I'm just jumping all over the place. But it's okay. Because I got them hops, baby. I got them hops. Uh, we say it we often, but today I'm going I'm to teach you how to say it correctly. Seed, time, harvest. It's not seed time. Seed, time, harvest. You got three T's. Time, talent, treasure. The most important is time. But the most neglected is time. I, I can't go back to I was 16. I, I can't go back. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> I, I, I can't go back to when I was 16. Cause at 16, well, look, maybe I should have listened to her. Maybe I should have married her when she was 14. Maybe I should have married when I was 16. Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. Seed, time, harvest. All right, I, I say here. Remember, God has an Abraham in everybody's life. He has an Abraham. You have, to, you have to connect properly with your Abraham. He said, and I will bless them that bless thee. And then he says this. See, we spend too much time defending ourselves, worrying about what people say, worrying about this, worrying about that. And look, today is easier than it ever has been for you to ignore people. Because in, in, you know, in my younger days, before the Internet, people had to tell you face to face or you had to hear what they're saying about you from somebody. Or they had, now, they don't say it. They write it. They, they, they put it on Facebook. They, so you got to read it. What? I'm not reading this. So you don't even have to, you don't have to subject yourself to it. Now. Of course, I got people in my circle, and they'd love me. they say, look, that's bad. You don't need to hear it. Okay. You, know, this, you can go ahead and read this. You can get. And so when people are properly connected, just like the disciples, when they say, look, uh, you can't leave the word. We'll tend to the tables. See, if you got the right people in your camp, they'll protect your soul as well. They won't come to you with all that garbage and say, oh, come here. Have you been on Facebook today? Have you been, what's DM? Huh? Direct message. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's, the other, what's the other plateau? I, I thought DM was Donovan Montreal. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what's the other plateaus? Instagram. Instagram. Have you been on? No, I ain't been there. Well, is it good or bad? Oh, it's bad. Why would I want to go there then? <laughs> we spend too much time sinking ourselves and what people think and say about us. All right, all right. And so now it's tough for the Holy Ghost to lead you anyway because you're in the flesh. Come on, come on. He's telling you to go here. He said, no, I don't want to go there. You didn't read what he said. No, I, I sure didn't read what he said. Right. Spend too much time. So, uh, and curse them, curse him that curse thee. All right. And then he says this. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So you have to understand. Come on, let's go to Ruth. Let's go to Ruth. Let's go to Ruth. Seed, time, harvest. That's God's way to our wealthy place. The world's way is job, time, and pay. <laughs> Job, time, and pain. Whoa. Or multiple jobs. <laughs> Let me tell you what your job is for. Your job is to get you seed to sow. That's the purpose of your job, to get you seed to sow. Now, I want to go to Ruth. We're going to start at chapter 2. Uh, we're going to go 8 to 16. Ruth chapter 2, 8 to 16. We're going to go in the, uh, in the King James. Ruth. Sowing is our way to our, to our wealthy place. Remember, it's seed, time, harvest. Of those three processes, in your opinion, which is the most difficult? Seed, time, or harvest? 
It's that waiting, man. It's that waiting. Why? Because we've been trained that waiting is not good. We've been trained to waiting is not supposed to be a part of God's process. We've been, we've been, we, we bought a bill of goods. That's a lie. Time is a part of the process. God works some things on the inside of you in time. The relationship is built on time. Ruth chapter 2, verse 8. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, here is thou. Well, I, I, I'm taking you too far. Taking you too far. Uh, go to one first. Let me go there. Chapter 1, 16 to 18. Taking you too far. Can't take you to Boaz without, without, without Naomi first. Chapter 1, verse 16. Apostle Thompson uh, mentions in his book entitled uh, How to Find Your Wealthy Place, he talks about Ray, uh, Ruth and Naomi. And so I think if he talks about them, bless God, I follow him, so I'm going to talk about them too. Uh, uh, outstanding book. You should get that. You should read that. Uh, 16. Now, Ruth, she had a tough, tough, a, a tough beginning, a tough life. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Naomi. Uh, her, her husband decided there was a famine, and so he left his homeland. He left where God lived to go move into uh, another land, Moab. And so while he was there, he took him and his two sons. His sons met some of the local girls there, and they married the local girls. And uh, when they got married, it was, you know, Ruth, two sons, a husband, and a daughter-in-law. Well, dad died. Dad died, so now we got the two son-in-laws, you know, kind of take uh, Naomi in, take care of her. And uh, then after that, her sons died. Her sons died. Yeah, it's Naomi. I said Ruth? Well, let me start again. Uh, Naomi was married to a, to a husband. Y'all got it. Y'all figure it out. Uh, Naomi was married. Uh, Naomi's husband died. Then after that, Naomi's two sons died. And so only thing Naomi is left with is her daughter-in-laws. Those girls loved her. I mean, my God, they loved her. Now, we're talking about our wealthy place. See, when you find your Abraham, you stick close. You let nobody. Th there's, a, there's a phrase that, uh, that I usually don't use, but uh, it fits. Now, there are principles, and you always look for the principle. Now, Jesus used this phrase, let no man put asunder, in the, term, in, the, in the context of marriage, right? Let no man put asunder. But that right there is a principle. What God had joined together, don't you let no man put asunder. There are relationships that I have, can't nobody, nobody, not even me, separate me from them. Uh, of course, Ruth and Naomi, Ruth wasn't going to let nobody separate her from Naomi. Elisha wasn't going to let nobody separate him from Elisha. Paul wasn't going to let nobody separate him from Jesus. I'm not going to let nobody separate me from Dr. Walker. I'm not going to let nobody separate me from Apostle Thompson. And I'm sure not going to let nobody separate me from Rhonda Jackson. It just ain't happening. There are relationships that no man, let no man, let who? No, man, that's nobody, not even you, yourself. You better not let nobody come in between this. And so Ruth had that idea. No, Naomi ain't nobody. No. Naomi was trying to drop Ruth off, <laughs> trying to drop her off. Oh, uh, her, her two daughter-in-law, she got this. Look, look girls, y'all young, you're fine. Go back to your homeland. Somebody's going to marry you. I mean, you know what? Don't, don't worry about me. I'm just going on home. And the one girl, she cried, they hugged one another, because all of them were close. They cried, they hugged one another, and then, uh, 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 you know, uh, the one went back, and she was crying all the way home, and, and Naomi started walking, and Naomi looking back, and, and, and Ruth is, is still back there. And saying, Naomi stops and said, come on, come on now, come on now. And so this is when Ruth begins to tell her something. And I use this in my wedding vows. So if I, if I ever marry you, you're going to say this. You better believe it, you better do it too. 
Romans chapter, uh, uh, I mean, Ruth 1, 16, it says, And Ruth said, Entreat me what? Entreat me not to leave thee, or to what? Return from following thee. For what? Thou goest. What how? I will go. And what else? I will lodge. Y'all reading with me. Y'all got to keep going. I need y'all. You got to keep going. I, well, I will lodge. Uh, did it, yeah, 16. Well, uh, I will lodge. And then he said, what? Thy people shall be. Thy shall be. What else? Where thou. Naomi was saying, like, uh -huh. verse 18, Ruth said, I ain't going nowhere. Verse 18, when she saw that she was what? Steadfast. Steadfast. I can't do nothing with this girl. I can't drop her off. When she saw that, she was steadfastly minded to go with her. Then she what? Don't it make sense for me to, stop? Don't it make sense for me to talk to you? Because you ain't going nowhere. See, what God had joined together. Now, we talked about seed, time, harvest. Ruth sold herself to Naomi. Tell me what I said. Now, when she sold herself to Naomi, there was no way, nothing that Naomi could, everywhere she went. Now, they broke. Tell me what they are. They broke. Now, it's one thing to be a man and broke. It's another thing to be a woman and broke. Why are y'all looking at me like that? <laughs> if you're a woman and broke, well, then men will try to take advantage of your brokenness. Amen. Yes. Amen. And so she went in there, Naomi, and ruled two women with nothing, and they went there. And don't you know there were probably thoughts on Ruth's head? Remember, Ruth has always been a Moabite. She's always lived there. And so now she is leaving her people. She's leaving everything that she knows, her culture and everything. She don't know anything about it. But when she gets there, she's going to dive into it. Now, it's different, way different as we're going to continue to read. Now, let's go to uh, chapter 2, verse 8. My wealthy place. She tied and connected herself to Naomi. Now, she didn't go in intending for a wealthy place. Look, I love God. It just so happened that this is just part of the benefit package. I'm connected to him, and I'm connected to his man, and this is part of the benefit. I'm not seeking this. It's seeking me. Ruth didn't seek everything that she, all she sought, all she saw was connection with Naomi. That was it. That was all she would look. I ain't leaving my mother-in-law. I'm not leaving my mama. She used to be my mother-in-law, but I chose to make her my mama. Two, this is eight. Eight said, then said who? Boy. Oh, no, I got to tell you about boy. Boy is the richest man in the place. The richest man in the place. Tell me what I said. I need this. Uh, can I get in the message? We're going to read in the message. Because I got to show you, Boaz got game. He got game. Then Boaz spoke to Ruth. Listen, my daughter, from now on, don't go to any other field to glean. Stay right here in this one and stay close to my young women. Watch where they are harvesting and follow them. And don't worry about a thing. Sound like Stevie Wonder to me, baby. Sound like Stevie to me. <laughs> Don't you worry about a thing, pretty mama. <laughs> I've given, I've given what? Orders. I've given orders. Oh, you, you jumped too fast. I've given orders to my servants. Not to what? Not to, not to harass you. Hold it right there. Let me bring you up to speed. Ruth. Her job, because she had none, her job was to go into the fields and people were harvesting. And her job was to get all of the bad stuff that they didn't want. If they missed anything, she would pick it up and put it in her basket. 
and she would take that basket to, her, to, to Naomi, her mom. She's no longer her mother-in-law. Her mom, take it to her. And so that's what Ruth was doing. And so when, you know, boy has come, said, well, what, what is this? And they, you know, gave her this, where am I not? Not to harass you. When you get thirsty, what? Feel free, Feel free to go and drink from the water buckets. That what? Sir. My servants have filled. Now she's got water. She's got, she's got safety. She's got everything that she needs. Keep going. She dropped, she what? Dropped her Bowed her face to the ground. How does this happen that you should pick who? Me. And treat me so kindly. Me, a what? But she found her Abraham. She found her Abraham. She didn't understand what was going on. She had no idea that you connected with somebody that God has an assignment for. And because you connected, strange things are going to happen for your good. She couldn't understand it. I'm not even from here. They got all these women around here. Oh, boy, I bet you they was hot. <laughs> I bet you they was hot. My goodness. Me, a foreigner, why are you treating me so good? Why are you treating me so well? Come on, let's go. Keep going. <laughs> Boaz, Boaz answered her. Look at what he said. Look at what he said. I've heard, I've heard all about you. Now, question. Stop for a minute. So that means that He's been watching a minute. He start questioning for a minute. Y'all need to stop getting these relationships without doing no research. You better stop getting these relationships. You better start asking, asking some questions. Research. Not the person because they're going to tell you what they think you want to hear. Oh, yeah, I've been working so long. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. My mom lived with me. I don't live with her. No, no, you better start doing some research. <laughs> Boaz did his research. Come on now. And then he said, Look, I've heard all about you. And then he goes into this. I heard about the way that you, you treated your I heard how you treat your Abraham. I heard how you treat your mother-in-law. What's after that? After Where did her husband die? In another country, Mohel. He ain't taking it. Boy, y'all better learn something. You better do some research. Boy, as her, he got all of her history. For she, she didn't even know that he knew. But he knew. The death of her husband and how What? 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 I heard all about you. Keep going. God reward for the well what you've done. And what, what, and, and what else? What else? And with a generous bonus besides from God. To who? I... I so she's left all about what she is. This is my new culture now. My new culture. Come on. My new culture. And, 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 and I like what he said. And with a bonus. With a bonus. With a what? Bonus. A bonus. A generous bonus. A bonus. A generous bonus. With a, a, a what kind of bonus? A generous bonus. But in his mind, I know what he's saying. He say, I'll be the bonus. <laughs> I'll be the bonus. And he see under his under 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 his wing. Come on, keep going. She said, Oh, oh sir, such oh, grace, grace, such kindness. I don't you treat me like one of your own? And what? I don't even belong here. See, when you connect properly to that assignment, to you, and you find your Abraham and you connect, there are going to be some seed, time, and harvest. But what happens is you get discouraged during the time period. Amen. And you just said, this ain't going to work. But there was no discouragement in this girl. 
none, zero, absolutely, zilch, no discouragement in her. 14, 14, got to get 14. What did it say? Come on. Bo got game. <laughs> Let's do lunch. Let's do take a break. Come on. Sit down. And he took really good care of her. And Bo has passed what? Roasted grain to her. She ate what? Her fill. Now, 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 now. Now, now, now. Let me bring you up to speed. Now remember, she don't have a whole lot. Naomi don't have a whole lot. And so Boaz takes her to lunch. And when Boaz takes her to lunch, she, she probably, you know, forgot all of that female etiquette, and she's just eating everything. <laughs> she's just going in and going. And the Bible says she, she ate her fill and even had some leftover. Watch what she did with the leftovers. Yeah, that's it. I wasn't going to say it, but since he said it, I guess I First time I took my girl. I took her on a date. I took her on a date. We were sitting down. I ordered my food. She ordered her food. I was so happy to, you know, have money in my pocket to pay for it. And then she ordered her, and then she ate mine. And he said, you going to eat that? <laughs> so you can have it. And she ate them both, and I'm thinking, like, I don't know if I got enough money to keep her. <laughs> 60 to 15 to 16, they said, look, when she got, now remember, she's done eating. And she had leftovers. And when she got up to go back to work, Boaz what? Hey, did I read 14? Did I read all the 14? Let me go back to it. Let me take a look. Make sure I did. Make sure I did. I won't miss nothing. And, lunch and, and she joined, uh, and she dipped in the wine. So she joined the harvesters. And Boaz passed the roast. She ate her fill and even had some left over. So she had some left over. When she, got, when she got up to go back to work, Boaz ordered his servant, Leave, let her gleam where there is still plenty of grain on the ground. And then he says something that make it what? Make it easy for her. Better yet? What? 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 Give her a, give her a special treat. Come on, come on. Really. Give me the give me give me the next one. What is it? What happened? Oh, oh, oh! Special treatment. Yeah, I finished all the fifteen. I'm on sixteen now, right? Special treatment. I still got more fifteen. All right, go to sixteen. Ain't no more. Oh, that's in the message. That's all together. So we, we, we got everything together. So she got special treatment. Boaz taking real good care of her. But first, she sold. She sold her life to Naomi. Apostle's been telling her, look, this, this money coming does not work without a seed. Now, she didn't have money to sow, but she had herself to sow. Which is better, money or yourself? Herself. You remember in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, they did all that they did, but first they sold themselves. Now, I, I need to put a bow on this. Uh, come with me to, uh, give me three. Still Ruth, chapter three, verse five. Three and five. Now, she comes back uh, in the King James. She took her leftovers and she brought it back to, to Naomi. And Naomi said, and, and then plus, Boaz gave her a whole bunch of said, wow, all of this stuff. And not only that, you bring lunch for me? And so they, they begin to talk. And then she said, oh, this happened? That happened? Oh, okay. All right. Huh? They do have 16 in the message? 216? I know I read it. <laughs> yeah, look for it, Bruce. You're going to find it. If my wife says that. Maybe, maybe I need to update this, this program. It just appeared. I know. Come on. Get it. 15? 15 and 16 is together. Special treatment after special treatment. Y'all got nothing else after special treatment? 
17 and 18? Oh, look, it is there. <laughs> Ruth gleam in the field until when? Evening. evening. So she, after lunch, she went back to work, and she stayed there till evening. When she threshed out what she had gathered, she ended up with what? Nearly a full sack of barley. Keep going. She went back to town. So she said, here, take this. Now, that's all of it, right? Is there an 18? Okay, okay, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. No, she asked, yeah. She asked her, so. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. From there, Naomi said, I got it from here. I got it from here. I got it from here. And so from there, Naomi says, okay, well, this is what we got to do. He likes you. He's feeling you, girl. This might be your husband. This might be your husband. And he, he girl, he paid, too. He's paid. The Lord's got a plan. And so Naomi sits there, and she lets Ruth know, all right, this is the custom. Now, check this out. Uh, she's not from here. And so Naomi tells her everything. She, go to 3 and 5 for me. 3 and 5. Wait me there. Uh, it's going to be in the King James from here on out. 3 and 5. So Naomi tells Ruth what to do. She tells her that, okay, look, they're going to they have a harvest. They're going to have a feast. They're going to have a celebration. And when they have this celebration, what you're going to do is you're going to wait, to wait till he goes to bed, wait till he lay down, and then you're going to go. You know, Don't let nobody see you. You're going to sneak over there, and you're going to lay down at his foot, at his feet. Now, one of the things that you got to know, they didn't wear shoes like us. They look more like sandals. And so she said, you're going to lay at his feet. And Naomi, verse 5, and she said unto her, what? All that thou said unto me, I will do. No question. Not like, uh, his feet? Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, mom. But if you say I'm lay at his feet, all that dust, all that crust. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to lay at his feet. And so she did exactly what she said to do. And, of course, you know what happened in uh, go to 4, 17. Chapter 4, verse 17, Boaz and Naomi got married. The, the wealthiest man in the place married a foreigner, hated by all of the women. You know how, the, you know how ladies can be. I mean, my goodness, uh, my wife is from, from, from Kennedy Heights. I'm in Morero. They don't like each other. And, and so how in the world she got him? Apple's from Chicago. Emmanuel's from North. How in the world she got him? What is wrong? So she, but, hey, at the end of the day, Ruth was so wrapped up into what God had done in her life, she ain't got time for no haters. Stop making time for haters. Remember, seed. Time, harvest. You're wasting your time with haters when God is trying to get you from, from the seed to the harvest. All right, all right. Verse 17 says this. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, there is a son born of who? Born to Naomi. They skipped Ruth. <laughs> this is Naomi's son. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of? Jesse, the father of God's got a plan. He's got a plan. She's got a plan. So Ruth was King David's grandmother. See, it's important for you to understand. He wants to take you to the wealthy place, but you have to sow yourself into him. Once you sow yourself into him and you properly connect to him, he's going to take you to your wealthy place. And it, it, look, they, it, it, he, we read in 66, there's going to be some fire, there's going to be some water, but you're going through it. Amen. So now you know. I don't care what the hard time is. I don't care how tight it is. You're going through it. Amen. Look, imagine two teenagers getting married, 19 and 17. Look, we had to live under somebody else's house. 
So we had to go through it. But we didn't stop. We didn't camp out there. Come on, come on. So often we just, it ain't going to never get better. It ain't going to never be this. It ain't going to never be that. I tell you what, I sure wish you never stop saying good things. I sure wish you stop saying all those bad things. Amen. Come on, let me get, I, I'm not done. I still got things to do. I still got things to say. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if y'all remember, but they used to have a show called Dragnet. Uh, the story is true, but the names of the, of the people have been changed to protect the innocent. Uh, I'm going to tell you about our very own boy situation. Now, a long time ago, uh, Boaz was in college at Russ. Boaz went to Russ College. Uh, Boaz was in college at Russ. And so he met a Ruth that nobody knew. And so the Ruth came and Ruth met Naomi. Now, Ruth, because she wasn't from the a lot of different ideas uh, about marriage and stuff. And, and, and Ruth will live together. Naomi said, oh, no, you not. I don't know if she said the H word or not. Uh, but <laughs> no, you not. No, you not. He's going to respect you. She did that, and because it was Ruth, she did all that was told her. She said, no, we can't do this. And then Naomi, now you go back to your home place. Go back. Leave right now. If he don't, go. And Ruth left. <laughs> Boy, it went to tripping. I mean, it was like losing his mind because, I mean, he, he was working. He was locking his keys in a car at least twice a week. <laughs> I mean, and then finally he came to his senses and he called in Ruth. And when Ruth got back, she, she got there and then Naomi, she stuck with Naomi. Even though she had a boy ass, Naomi became mother-in-law in the beginning, but now mother by choice. And so... I got to tell you, because uh, I am so proud of, uh, of the Ruth from Chicago, that it's her birthday. I can tell my wife's age, I can tell my mama's age, but I don't know about my children. Uh, I hadn't cut. And so uh, Ruth is his birthday, and we are honored to have such a person uh, to, to listen, because Rhonda Jackson has a lot of wisdom. There have been a lot of Ruth wannabes, but none of them listen. See, a Ruth is going to pay attention. Is going to go against all their own culture and just say, all right, I'm going to do this. I mean, let's face it. Ruth, Lane, look, if I told you uh, what you're going to do is you're going to lay it, you, that he's the one, you're going to lay at Boaz's feet. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> and so Ruth did everything Naomi said. And so as a result, she got her Boaz. He wasn't Boaz in the beginning. He Boaz now, but <laughs> got her Boaz. See, it's important for you to understand, in order for you to go to your wealthy place, you got to follow instruction. Once you properly connect, once you find your Abraham, once you find your Naomi, you let nobody separate you. See, Apostle Thompson is, is my connection. There is nobody. I got grandchildren, love my grandchildren. And one of them actually said this to me. He said, look, Papa, I think you love Apostle more than you love us. <laughs> I thought for a minute because I didn't want to say I do, but I, I, uh, I, I explained to him. I said, you got to understand, it's because I love you, I'm properly connected to him. Because he's going to teach me how to properly treat you and raise you. Because if there's no him, then I don't know what I'm doing. And you are too important for me not to know what I'm doing. That's a good answer, huh? Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. You are too important for me. And so those connections are just like that. It's not that you love one person more than another person. It's the fact that this connection here is going to help me properly relate to you. Because I love God, I can properly love my wife. I know how to treat her. One of the things, look, if you're going to be around Apostle Thompson, he's going to let you know often and early. Tell me what I said. Often and early. Often and early. Not early, but early. Often and early, I don't want no holes around me. 
You got a wife, she's your wife. She takes care of everything that you, everything you need is on the inside of her. You have no reason or no, you, don't you go outside of her. Amen. Look, if you're a wife and a man talks to your husband like that and you don't appreciate him, apostle also has a saying, you can't train a heifer. <laughs> you're a heifer. This man is telling you, I don't want your husband cheating on you, and then you upset because you don't. Can't train a heifer. <laughs> In my apostle voice. I think on that note, we need to close. <laughs> on that note, we need to close. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. I thank you, Lord, for the lessons that you're teaching us. I thank you, Lord, for our own wealthy place. Because our wealthy place is different than another wealthy place. But you know what? We all have a wealthy place. So I thank you, Lord, for our apostle that's leading all of us into our wealthy place. I thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that's on the inside of him. I thank you, Lord, that he's a trainer. He's a man that loves you. And I thank you, Lord, for connecting us with him. So I thank you, Lord, for the word. I thank you, Lord, that we are not just hearers, but we are doers of it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pray with you, but first I want to, I mean, this is for the Internet family. If, you don't know, if you're not certain in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't know if heaven would be your home. The Bible says that if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that God had raised Jesus from the dead, then God would save you. I want to pray with you. Say this with me. Say, dear God, I believe with my heart. I say with my mouth that you... Raise Jesus from the dead. And according to your word, salvation belongs to me. I repent of my sin of not making Jesus the Lord of my life. And I thank you that I am saved. Born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you're going to text LCC to 866-891-0606. You're going to text LCC to 866-891-0606. When you do that, it's going to give you a link. Click on that link, and it's going to tell you. It's going to give you scriptures whereby you should put on the inside of you. Because if you hide the word in your heart, you will not sin against God. So you need to go ahead and make sure that you do that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, thank God for the word. And uh, I will bring uh, Emmanuel, I mean Boaz, up here, and, uh, and, he, and he will take us home in Jesus' name. Happy birthday, Apple! Say something different. Say what you want, not what you have. Our, our words have power. When he takes you out of something, he's taking you into something. You have to establish a relationship so he can tell you what to see. My wealthy place is my assignment.
for tuning into the service. If you would like to sow a seed, the different ways to sow should be at the bottom of the screen. You can scan the QR code. You can text sow seed to 866-891-0606, or you can mail your seed to P.O. Box 742, Petal, Mississippi, 39465. We also have a website. You can go to lccpetal.com, find a tab that says sow seed, to go ahead and sow that seed. Amen? All right. Now, if you are not on bernardjackson.tv, what you waiting on? We have an Apple app. We have an Android app. We're on Fire Stick, Google TV, Roku TV, Apple TV. We're everywhere. So go ahead and download the app now. Amen. All right, next up, if you would like to be a part of our database, if you would like to be notified anytime we go live or anytime we have something going on, I want you to text LCC to 866-891-0606. Amen. Go ahead and close for the day. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Life Construction Church, building the kingdom of God, one life at a time.